going to take uh, some time this morning and kind of actually follow down that path a little bit, which is to give God glory and um, also understand some of the ways of God. You know, it's one thing to behold the acts of God, but to understand his ways, what's in his heart, what is God working on that oftentimes we're so focused on our immediate circumstances and kind of how our life is being affected by something and we miss the wide lens of God, what God sees. And, you know, if you're watching the news and you're listening to people and you're watching the Weather Channel and whatever, you're getting all this information fed from you. And at some point we just have to say, you know, God, help me see what you see about this situation and what's going on. So I want to take a little time to just um, do that. And that at the end here today, I'm actually going to uh, create a little space just to hear a few little testimonies. I'll give you some guidelines for that when we get there. But uh, let me just pray. Father, thank you this morning for hungry hearts here. You know why we've come. Each of us is here with a unique set of life circumstances and needs. And yet in the midst of it all, we've acknowledged you as our source and our only hope. And that's why we're here today, because of a need we have for you and because of a love we have for you. I pray that as we spend these few moments in your word, that this word, which is alive, would begin speaking very personally to each one of us here in a way that only you can make happen, Lord, by your spirit. We acknowledge you and we look to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalms 148 and verse 8. <clears throat> kind of picking up in the middle of the psalm, but just wanted to capture a few thoughts here initially. Fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind fulfilling his word. You know, it's fascinating. Maybe you know this, maybe you don't, but this word stormy, if you looked it up in your Strong's Concordance, those of you that enjoy that kind of stuff, it's Strong's number 5591. And it literally means a hurricane. Look it up. The very first word in the list of definitions, you know, when you use a Strong's Concordance, you often get a whole list of possible meanings to a given word. It could be that much, you know, just a lot of stuff, possible meanings. And the way that is set up is the one that's most commonly used will appear first. The one that's most commonly used will appear first. And then the other ones also can be certain descriptions or definitions given to those words. This word, hurricane, appears first in the list of stormy. So when we're talking about stormy wind fulfilling his word, you can pull it up yourself. The very first word that shows up in the list is the word hurricane. And notice this. Well, so let's just use that word here for our conversation today. Hurricane wind fulfilling his word. How can a wind fulfill God's word or God's will? It's an interesting question. You could get into a lot of deep theological things at this point if you wanted to, which I'm not trying to. Just making a point and let the scripture speak for itself. It's clear here the storm can and often is sent by God to fulfill something God has in mind. Now, I understand destruction and those types of things. We know God didn't come to kill, steal, and destroy. He came to give us life. Amen. But don't ever lose sight of the fact that God is the sovereign God. And he rules in the affairs of of men. So just hang with me for a little bit. Give me a little space to make a few points, okay? Before you judge me as wrongly interpreting God's motivation. One thing I found about storms is storms tend to uncover things. Remember the testimony Christy shared years ago? I guess it was Desert Storm or wherever it was when our guys and gals were out there in the Middle East fighting uh, a war, <clears throat> and there was a particular amazing testimony given by a general that happened to be at a conference Christie was at, Pastor Christie was at, and basically uh, this windstorm had kicked up. They were encamped, a bunch of our soldiers were encamped, and a huge windstorm kicked up, and it was, give, it was wreaking havoc on them. 
Sand was all in their guns. All of their mechanisms weren't working properly. I mean, it was a mess for them as soldiers, and they were just like distressed by it all. Nothing was working because of the storm. They were hunkered down in their you know, tents or whatever they had set up there. And uh, they were, uh, you know, you're tempted in moments like that to pray, obviously, but to complain probably too, because nothing's working the way you hoped it would. And then in the morning, when they woke up, the wind had blown off a whole landfield mine that was hidden that they would not have seen had the wind not come through. So moments before, they're complaining to only wake up and find out that God was in the stormy wind fulfilling his word my personal conviction and my kind of default is i'm always looking for a sovereign god who in the middle of bad situations is doing something bigger and better than the situation seems to say i mean you could go on and on talking about these kind of things it's like jesus hanging on the cross you know i i get it god is good but be careful how you define good God is good, no question about it. And he only does wondrous things, but be careful how you define good. Jesus hanging on the cross was not good if you judged it in the moment it was happening. I mean, if you were standing there looking at Jesus ripped and shredded apart by the sins of the world, hanging on the cross, you'd say that's not good if you judged it right then. But don't judge a thing before God has his chance to finish a thing. And so many times we're here saying, well, that can't be God because it's not good based on my limited view of what good is. Come on, we got to get a bigger lens. we got to have a bigger God. He's working mightily in the midst of temporary brokenness and temporary dysfunctions and temporary things that don't make sense to us. God, give us a bigger lens. Help us to see what you see. So it uncovered a whole minefield and rescued a whole group of our soldiers that day because they would have headed out into a very troublesome event. One thing I found about the storms, you know, as we've just come through this threat and for many a storm they really got impacted hard is it uh, moves us into self-preservation mode and people you know you're running around Lowe's and home. anybody go to Lowe's or Home Depot let me see honestly let me see your hands come on the rest of you are lying you know you were there I saw you there Lowe's and Home Depot right you're around there I mean people are, you know and boy they are on it this year I mean you think they're going to run out no no they're handing you gas cans and generators, you know what I mean? And they got pallets of them stacked up and stacked up and stacked up. They were on top of their business. And, uh, but it's interesting to watch people making decisions in the middle of the threat of a storm. And what drives that usually is, I want to be comfortable. I need a generator because I want AC or at least electricity. I want a refrigerator, right? I want to be comfortable. And I want to protect my stuff, so I'm going to board things up, and I'm going to anchor things down, whatever I'm going to do. But it's usually the storm kind of moves us toward uh, the things that are self-preserving in nature. Preserve my stuff and preserve my comforts and the best I can. And if it's going to be really threatening, I'll button it up and get out of town. Because I'm concerned about me being okay, Right? One thing I found about storms is storms uncover things. Not just minefields in the desert somewhere. They uncover things in us. They uncover fears in us. They uncover all kinds of stuff in us. The wind and the threat of loss starts creating all kinds of interesting manifestations in our life. The threat of loss and the threat of lack of comfort does move us to action, which is pretty interesting. Even people that are couch potatoes get off their couch, usually. Right? I had an interesting revelation as I was watching the Weather Channel, and I'm uh, here to confess, I watched the Weather Channel probably too much. Trying to make a good decision for my family, you know? <clears throat> but one of the things I thought saw was fascinating, and just a revelation I felt the Lord give me, was they were talking about the eye of the storm, right? 
the eye of the storm. And when it was hovering over the Bahamas and it was coming in there, it was so well defined, this particular storm, so well defined. And these planes that fly into these storms, I cannot for the life of me figure out how you fly into 185 mile an hour wind. I just don't get it. But they fly in and then, and then they had they filmed what they called the stadium effect. Did you see this? The stadium effect. And basically what it is, is um, can, can you find that? The stadium effect of Dorian. Let's just see if we can find it. Those guys are so good back there, they can find anything. Yeah. But let me just tell you what, just kind of at a glance what it is. So this, you know, the, the eye of the storm is just like kind of dead airspace. There's nothing going on there. It's like sun shining and no wind. There's nothing happening. And just outside of that is this hurricane force wind that's actually got the clouds cold air and hot air somehow formed this tiered seating effect like a coliseum, like a stadium. Stadium seating all the way around the inside of the storm. It just kind of bevels up like that, and they call it the stadium effect. And so as that storm was coming in, and I'm looking at these pictures on the weather channel of this thing, later on when we were praying, I, I just had this revelation. It was like, you know, the reference in Hebrews 12.1, Wherefore, seeing that we are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. That's a reference to those who've died and gone on before us, Hebrews 12.1, and are now watching us. And the reference, Paul says, let us run the race. The context is that image of being encompassed about. It's encircled about. It's like a Roman uh, amphitheater or a place, not amphitheater, but Colosseum for sporting event. So it's like being sitting in the, uh, on, on the playing field and you're being watched by all these people. And so as I saw that storm and I saw the stadium effect of the storm, I thought, you know what? There's a lot of people in glory watching how we're doing in the middle of this storm, staring in on us. What is this storm uncovering and how will you and I react in the middle of it? As the storm passes by, heaven peers in to watch people, to watch you, to watch me. So you were being watched during this last storm. How did you do? <laughs> oh, no. How did you do? You know, another interesting thing. So just as a heads up, we, we left town. And uh, I made a decision and sent my wife and my mom and my sister to a friend's house in Georgia. I decided to board the place up. <clears throat> And I followed after. And by that time, the storm was kind of a mute thing. It was not really going to hit us, but the decision was made, and we were doing what we were decided to do. You know, you get into this kind of double-minded place. I was in the double-minded place way too long. And finally, I just said, bless God, I'm just going to make a decision. This is what we're going to do. And so we did it, right? So I'm driving up by myself the next day, early the next morning, and I'm in Georgia, hit Savannah. I'm now heading east on 16. And... Uh, Everybody knows the storm is basically offshore now. There's not a huge threat, although, you know, Savannah could still get some weather. We knew that. Did you find it? Yeah, look at that. That's like kind of part of the, the seating, the wall of it. Anyways, you could Google it later and see. You can move that. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> but I'm on 16, and, you know, there's hardly any traffic. And I'm just driving towards where I've sent my family. God bless my family for submitting to their... Fearless leader. <laughs> oh, help us, Jesus. That's all I'm saying. But anyway, so I'm driving and whatever. And, and you know how they, they do in these storms, or they've learned to do in these storms, when there's a bad storm, they actually take the other f lanes of traffic that are supposed to be heading east, and they make them all flow west just to get everybody out of town. You cannot go west to east at a certain point because they shut the roads down. They've learned this the hard way because... You get so much congestion on those roads, so they make everything flow in one direction. But there was really no need to, and yet I'm driving. I get on the, the radio thing, and, and they say, yeah, at 8 o'clock this morning, all traffic will be heading, you know, heading west. I'm thinking, why? There's hardly no cars on the road. We know the storm is off. You know, what's the deal? And sure enough, police were going up and down the road, setting up their, you know, their flares, 
And then here comes a helicopter right over the interstate, police helicopter. I'm thinking, guys, haven't you been watching the Weather Channel? I mean, what's up, you know? And now I could be wrong, but this is my take on it. My take was these guys were so ramped up and amped up to protect and to save that when the storm was kind of called off, like it's going to pass us, the chief of police or whoever was running the thing said, you know what, this is a great opportunity to practice. That's my opinion. And I, I think he just, you know, I think I'm right. I could be wrong, but I think I'm right. I think he just said, you know what, we're already, come on, we got all the gear out, we got the equipment out, you got your assignments, just go do it, let's use it as a drill. Helicopter, I mean, that pilot was like he was in the storm. I could feel it as he went overhead. I'm like, what? We're, we're on a totally different. And then it hit me. They were practicing. You know, one of the things I felt about the storm and storms like this is there's great opportunities. Yes, storms uncover things in us, but they also give us opportunities to learn how to prepare for something that is going to happen in the earth. Now, there's coming, and whether you believe this or not, just read your Bible, there is absolutely coming trouble and a season of trouble to the earth, according to Jesus. And God's going to have people that have run the drills enough, spiritually speaking. They've not just gotten distracted. And I'm talking, get the big lens back out now. How could the stormy wind in this situation fulfill God's word? Could God have been doing something even if it was simply giving us an opportunity to start examining our hearts? You got fear issues, you got whatever it is. To work together, how organized are you? I was thrilled, uh, Brian Alvare, storm time comes along, Brian hits a button, punches out a list, here's what we do during a storm. <laughs> That brother is so on it. I really appreciate these. You know, we got a list. Boom, 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 boom. We do this, 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 and this. Amen. What about the church? What about God's hand on us? How, how did you do if you start thinking from what was God's purpose? Or could there even be a purpose in God in allowing the storm to come so close to us? Is he trying to work something in us for something greater? You know, all throughout history, God has been gracious to give foreshadowings of things to come so that when those things actually come, somebody will be present and know what to do in the moment they come. Did you hear what I just said? God has been so gracious to give us repeated, it's what I call progressive duplication, Progressive duplication, meaning that God is moving to an end. He has an end in mind. Something he's going to accomplish in the end. And he progressively repeats what that is over and over throughout history to bring us to the point that when it actually happens, we know what he wants and we're present to do what he wants in that moment. You see, there's going to be a people who are willing in the day of his power. People who are not just heart willing, but they understand what God's after in that moment. Paul says, these things were written for our learning upon whom the ends of the world have come. Speaking about Israel's history. These things were written as instructions for us upon whom the end of the world has come. Meaning, we're supposed to be learning from the stuff that's gone on before us. Even the three major feasts of Israel, and really you can include all seven if you wanted, were simply rehearsals. They were rehearsals. This is going to be fulfilled one day. And sure enough, the Passover was fulfilled in Jesus. This is going to be fulfilled one day. And sure enough, it was fulfilled at Pentecost. And there's yet this coming fulfillment in the Feast of Tabernacles waiting to happen. But if we, do, if we don't understand what God is looking for, then chances are the storm's going to come, hear me now, and we're going to move into self-preservation mode. Wrong choice. 
You see, God's not going to have a people at that moment who are in self-preservation mode. I know I've spoken to it perhaps over in the years, but I love the insights that are included in Matthew 24 where Jesus is coming out of the temple and his disciples are following him and they're so impressed with Herod's temple, beautiful structure. And they say to him, Master, have you considered the magnitude and the glory of this temple? And Jesus says, do you see that place? I tell you, not one stone will be left upon the other. And they said, tell us, when is the end of the world and the sign of your coming? Two different topics. But when is this going to happen? And Jesus goes on to list what? A bunch of problems coming in the earth. Matthew chapter 24, right? Wars, rumors of wars, famine, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places, betrayal among believers, all kinds of things going on. And then in verse 14, he says this, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. So here's the idea, the important idea to catch here. All of the troubles Jesus list are not designed to cause us who believe to go into hibernation. They're designed to create a platform for the preaching of the gospel. You see, where there's war, it's the perfect opportunity to step up onto the stage of history and preach the gospel of peace. You see, the difference is some people are going to move into self-preservation mode when these things start happening. How can I protect myself? How can I protect my money? How can I protect my life? How can I protect? And I'm telling you, God's trying to deliver us from the need to protect ourselves. There is, by the way, no safety outside of the will of God. That's a fact. There is no safety outside the will of God. We could take time and talk about how the swelling of the Jordan, which is harvest time, fleshes out the lions that hang out around the high grass at the Jordan River. But Jeremiah says that when the Jordan swells, the lions go into the city. That's what Jeremiah says. So the Jordan River swells. That means the lions can't hide in the tall grass. So where do they go? They go into the city. You see, the swelling of the Jordan is a metaphor talking about when times of adversity and trouble come. So guess what? People who go hiding in the city are getting a bunch of lions coming to them. But rather... Oh, stay with me this morning. Joshua and Israel are standing at the banks of the Jordan, getting ready to cross over the Jordan. And the scripture gives, gives us this kind insight and says, and the Jordan's banks were swollen because it was harvest time. That means Joshua standing in front of a, an impossible set of circumstances. Not only does he have to cross a river, it's a swollen river. It's harvest time. But the lions are in the city. That means the safest place to be is facing the challenges, but in the will of God. Are you, are you even with me? You're tracking with me this morning. So many people run into hide in their places. If there's one thing this storm can flush out in all of us, it's the need and the tendency to self-preserve and no condemnation because it's in every one of us at some level. And you say, oh, I didn't even feel that way. Well, if that storm had been a little closer, we'd have seen it in you. So don't boast too, too bright, you know, thinking, well, I didn't. No, 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 just let it, you know, please don't tempt God. <laughs> I'm just saying, don't, don't bring that stuff down on us, okay? You know, trust me, I'm telling you the truth. Psalms 107, verse 25 the same word, stormy, hurricane, it's the same Hebrew word, appears here, Psalms 107, verse 25. For he, God, commands and raises the stormy or the hurricane wind, which lifts up the waves there of this psalm. And I, you know, we don't have time this morning to do justice to this psalm, but it's a really amazing psalm. Let me just give you a quick overview because I want to zero down in a portion of this psalm. It's a, let's remember. The Psalms were songs. They were the hymn book of Israel. They were what would be repeated and rehearsed for sake of worship and memory. To remember, to recall 
Music is a powerful tool given by God to enforce and reinforce God's works, God's ways, God's desires, and so on. So this is a song, the song um, 107. And if you read the psalm, the quick flash is this, that it's a picture of man's uh, lack of getting it. Okay, he doesn't get it. And so God says, so I'm going to let you go into a really troublesome time, and then you're going to cry out to me, and when you finish crying out to me, I'm going to bring you into some peace. And then it goes into this refrain, like songs have stanzas and refrains, and the refrain is kind of a repeating uh, sentence or whatever, and the refrain is, oh, that men would praise him, right? Oh, that people, you know, it's like, oh, that you would just get it. Why is it that we have to go into all this adversity, get all upside down, and then we cry out to God, and then God saves us and brings us into a place of peace? And it repeats this. This is what the psalm is about. It's just repeating this theme over and over again. And every time it gets in there, it, it comes in with this refrain that says, oh, that men would praise him. Um, it has an ultimate, an ultimate, this psalm has an ultimate um, desire in the heart of God. It's something God's after in this psalm toward us. It's found in the very last verse, verse 43 Whoso is wise and will observe these things. It's talking about the ups and the downs and us crying out and God answering and whatever. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. To understand. You see, God is crying out for us to understand the loving kindness of the Lord. The loving kindness of the Lord. Let me read to you just a section of this that's related to the stormy wind, and then I just want to uh, create some opportunities here. I'm going to begin in verse 23. We're in Psalms 127 and verse 23. They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises the stormy wind. Who commanded? He, God, commanded and raised the hurricane wind, which lifts up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heaven. They go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and He brings them out of their distresses. He makes the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad because they be quiet. So he brings them unto their desired haven. And here's the refrain again. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And then the conclusion, let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. This last verse is an important verse. So, you know, just what I finished reading there simply says this, those that live by the water, the people that work on the ocean, maritime people, whatever, they get it. They've been in rough seas. They've seen them blown high and huge swells and threatened by all that stuff. They've, they've seen how God intervenes. They understand the principle of storm and calm and crying out to the Lord. And then the psalm ends with this, let them exalt him where? In the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Now, let me just say this this morning because we're going to do something a little unique today. There are some times God wants to hear from his people in the setting of the congregation. I'm going to say that one more time. There are times when God wants to hear from his people in the setting of his congregation. That is what this verse says. Let them exalt him also in the congregation and praise him in the assembly of the elders. So there are times when God wants to hear these things when we're gathered together. Now clearly, 
You should be individually giving thanks to the Lord. You should be always, you know, of a thankful heart and so on. But there are some times, according to the scripture, when God delights to hear thanksgiving in the midst of the congregation. And perhaps you're here today, you're saying, Pastor, with all due respect, I didn't come here to listen to sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so ramble on about endless nothing. Amen. Amen. I didn't come to hear all that stuff. I came to be in the presence of God, and I was hoping that the preacher studied and prayed, and he's going to be the one speaking today. And please, do we have to hand the microphone to somebody else? No. I hear a lot of different, you know, things in the Spirit. But today is not about what we came for, but about what we came to give. We want to give God something he deserves today. Now, I'm just going to do this based on the scripture we just read. Let them, what does it say? Exalt him also in the congregation. Let them, that's us, exalt who? Him in the congregation of the people and praise who? Him in the assembly of the elders. So there are some meetings where God wants to hear from us corporately in the midst of the congregation. Now, maybe you don't see that. It's okay. Just run with me today. I think you're going to be blessed by it. Today is not about what we came to get. It's about what we came to give. If we miss this opportunity to give thanks to God today, we've missed the opportunity, and it's a big one. You see, God just spared our community. Devastation. And if we miss the opportunity to give thanks to Him, You know, this is the context of this portion of Scripture. The stormy wind fulfills His word, right? The waves mount up, they come down, they crash, people cry out. God delivers them. Oh, that men would praise Him, right? And then the whole psalm, after it repeats that scenario over and over again, the whole psalm ends with, in the congregation. That's us today. God wants to hear some thanksgiving. I do want to give a couple little outline rules for this, because what I'm getting ready to do is, I know it's dangerous business, open the microphone. Oh. Okay. The thing that God is desiring, and what the psalmist brings out, is let them exalt Him. So, what I'm going to ask you to do, if you have something in your heart, a quick praise or thanksgiving. I want to make sure that we're all on the same page here. What we're, what we're looking for today, there's lots of wonderful things you can talk about today, but please narrow it down to these types of things. We want to give thanks and exalt Him. I don't want to know about how well prepared you were. I don't want to know how powerful your generator was. I don't want to know how much water you stored or what a great deal you... And listen, turn it to praise for Him. I don't want to know how smart you were to not leave, because I left. Okay? I don't want to hear about, that's that's exalting you, or it's diminishing me, and I don't want you going there. Okay? I want to talk about exalting him. I want to look for some opportunities, and and listen, this this is something God is longing for to hear from you. Let them not the pastor, let them exalt him in the congregation. So the rules are them, that's all of us, have opportunity here. Not that you have to get up here by any means, but I'm giving you an opportunity. The rule is to exalt him and to praise him and to lift him up. I have to give a quick praise for somebody who can't be here today. Maybe she's watching online, I don't know. But our dear sister, Elaine Hutzel. If you know Elaine, Elaine had open heart surgery some t- I mean, a long time back now. That gal has endured, you don't even know. Goodness gracious, she has been through it, man. And uh, she's a brilliant gal, sharp mind, just a beautiful sister in the Lord. But she's really been through it, so she finally got relocated. I mean, she had all kinds of issues with wounds that wouldn't heal and just stuff she was wrestling through. Wounds are doing better. Her heart's doing fine. She can't walk yet. She barely can stand up, whatever. So they've moved her here locally, and she's there for therapy, 
Her feet are still oozing fluids and stuff. She's swollen. She's got a lot of stuff still going on. So please remember her in prayer. And by the way, if you're around and you want to drop in, she's at Quality Health on the island. If you know Elaine, she'd love to see you, I'm sure. So I went to see her the other day after the storm. And uh, she was amazing. I said, so, so what happened? How, you know, how'd you fare? And she said, well, they evacuated us. I said, oh, really? She goes, oh, yeah. They evacuated, because there was mandatory evacuations. You see, the reality is I was the only obedient guy in the whole place. I mean, I'm just saying. You can live under that disobedient stuff all day long, but I'm, I can say before God and men, I've obeyed the ordinances of God and man. I, you know, just, just, I feel peace. But anyway, yeah, they evacuated all the nursing home people. Those that couldn't go with family and so on. There was about 40 people. <clears throat> they put them all on a bus and they rolled them three hours to Nashville, Georgia. Does anybody know where Nashville, Georgia is? <laughs> I had no idea there was a Nashville, Georgia. <laughs> That's why nobody knows where it is, because it's nowhere, I don't think. I think it's just a bump in the wall. But anyways, Nashville, three-hour, three-plus-hour drive. <clears throat> By the time it came to load Elaine, they had run out of wheelchairs. So Elaine, who, you know, she, she's really just been beaten up through this process for so long, they end up having to manhandle her get her up on the bus, drag her down the aisle of the bus to get her to a seat. I mean, she's all bruised up just from being handled. They, they, they took her three hours, and you thought you had a bad storm experience. Three hours, she gets there. They have beds on the floor. Their mattress is on the floor. She's, you know, Elaine was Coca-Cola's lead process and change development person, that's not an exaggeration, on the international level. Coca-Cola, brilliant gal. Organizer to the nth degree. You can imagine the frustration of lack of organization. Nobody had a plan. Nobody had a spreadsheet. There was nothing, you know. They were just kind of figuring out as they went. So they had mattresses and she said, for the life of me, I can't figure it out. They pushed the mattresses together. So to get to a patient, they had to kind of step and wiggle their foot between a mattress and to change people to... Three-day event. And she is there telling me about this. She goes, you know, she said, but... She goes, I understand the need to evacuate because it was mandatory and it could have been a terrible situation. Da -da 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 -da. They had no backup generators, whatever. <clears throat> and she said... The one good thing was that because there was no wheelchair for me and because of this pump thing for my feet that weep, they had to put me near an outlet, so I had a charger for my phone. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? Come on. I proudly am called her pastor. You know what I mean? Someone that can find something to say thank you for after being dragged down the aisle of a bus, bruised, and I'm thinking, Jesus, help us find perspective today. Help us to give thanks. So I'm going to just say these two things, and I'm going to open the mic. I want to personally give thanks for the women in my life. I'm serious. My wife, my mom, my sister, for rolling with me in a lot of my indecisiveness, and just doing what I asked them to do. I love you guys. I say thank you. It was, it was messy for me. <laughs> and uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are jewels to me, all of you. I also want to thank my brother Joseph Maltz. <laughs> I get a phone call. He must have been picking up the vibe in the spirit or something because I'm kind of walking around in circles, you know. <laughs> what are we doing? Where are we going? And uh, he says, hey, what y'all doing? I said, well, you know, I've made a decision. We're going to roll out, and you, you, you need any help with anything? I said, well, uh, you know, I'm going to put boards up on my house. I know. It's, I, I humble myself and say, what an idiot. I'm, I'm there. But the short of it is, Joseph came out after he had been working a whole day helping somebody else board a house. 
and he helped me just screw boards up. And I just want to say thank you, my friend. I say, I'm, now listen to me. I'm exalting the Lord for sending me help through a brother. Amen? Yeah. And there were others that reached out too, and I thank God for you. All right. Who's got a thanksgiving? Come on. We're going to obey the word of the Lord this morning. And... Uh, thankful that um, you help me every Sunday. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, but you know, I think w- what I'm more, most thankful of is the Lord revealed to me um, a couple different things. One thing is how important it is not to lose perspective on what we're so blessed with. You know, I'm sitting in my warm house, cool house, uh, <laughs> my lazy boy with everything I need, and these people in the Bahamas have nothing. Mm. So I'm, I'm thankful for everything. Mm. I don't have to walk in dirt, you know. I have a stove to cook on, you know. I'm just mm. thankful for all of that. But then I'm, I'm looking and I'm remembering, you know, Robert and Eric and I, we all work together and we repair things and we fix things that on people's houses or whatever. And the last storm came through and it devastated a lot of people on the island. And as this storm's coming this way, I'm thinking, oh, God. It's opportunity. We're going to do, make this and we're going to do that and all this. And I, then the Holy Spirit just smacks me on the back of the head and he's like, okay, how's that good for all these people that it devastates? Mm-hmm. And, and where's your dependence? Is it in your pocketbook or is it in me? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you're right, Papa. Mm-hmm. You know, Amen. It, it's not in my <clears throat> hammer. It's not in my pocketbook. It's in you. Mm-hmm. Thank you for reminding me where, where my help comes from, where my employment comes from, where everything comes from. Um, And if it don't, what happens? I mess it up. (laughs) Amen. You know, so I'm thankful that, you know, that he reminded me of of how good I have it. Amen. And to quit striving to get better, just to be relaxed in what I have and be comfortable in him. Amen. Um, Because it is truly all about him. So why don't you close with this? Why don't you say this? Because I want, this is what I feel like success looks like today. At each testimony, if we can say to him, Father, thank you. Thank you, Papa. Love you. <laughs> Truly. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you Lord. It's for him. Who's next? Come on, Andy. We want to just give him today. Amen. Thanks. We want to give him exaltation. And it is. I thank God that we were, I want to echo both uh, of what both of you just said. Uh, one, praise God that the Lord delivered us as he did. We look at the devastation of the Bahamas and people that are still missing and livelihoods that are gone and just the pain and suffering they've gone through. And so, yes, Lord, bless them and deliver them. And thank you, Lord, for the deliverance that you gave this nation and you gave our homes and family. And yeah. this, and praise God for family. Um, I have a brother-in-law and a nephew that came and boarded up our home as well as my mother-in-law's home. They stepped up. They still had things to do with their home to get their family safe. And they stepped up and did this. And God has blessed us with family here in our fellowship, and God has blessed us with family that we sometimes forget to say thank you to. And But God put them in our life, and God blesses us with them. Thank you, Lord, for Amen. these things. Amen. Awesome. Thank you. Somebody else? Come on, Mike. So... Rob had mentioned this morning in the prayer room about uh, God's doing a new thing, and shall we not know it? And I was going to send out a text to the intercessors because I felt so about this, which is you can pray to God for mercy, yes, and we should, but there you can also speak to that storm, which is exactly what, as an intercessor, you learn how to do through Christ. Christ is in you. Jesus spoke to the storm, and he said, Peace, be still. That's exactly what happened. I saw it in a vision. That thing, hardly ever hurricanes just sit there and don't do anything. They just sat there. 
Now, granted, it was on Honduras, which, I mean, uh, Bahamas. Uh, Bahamas, which isn't good. I, granted that. But it was like that thing was an animal. And when the intercessors, and not just our intercessors, it was, you know, everybody uh, that was speaking to that thing, it was like it suddenly went, like, oh, like something's speaking to me. Like I, I'm prohibited to go any further. It didn't know what to do. Then it decreased. It went from a five to a four to a three to a two. I mean, come on. They spoke to that thing, and it reacted. And so that was the first thing. The second thing on a more natural basis was <laughs> I was working a lot. I was working a little too much, perhaps. I had actually worked on a Sunday once when I don't normally do that, and I needed a break. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was so God. It was so the Lord. I'm telling you, I just, I had this thing going on with this client, and he was a real one of those, you know, you don't like to have. And uh, he's a real stickler. And, uh, and when that storm came, he said, oh, I got to go. And I said, wow, that's a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you on your way, you know. And it just gave me such a peace and a rest. And I had like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday off. And it was just like, it was glorious. It really was. I was so thankful. You know, the, the storms can bring can bring a rest in some weird way. You know, thank God, obviously, it didn't, it didn't hit us, but it was beautiful, you know? So, amen. That's, amen. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. Come on, Jimmy. I actually, uh, I had a, like, clear picture of what was going on around uh, Tuesday. Um, I was working, and... I said, Lord, I just, you know, I hear your voice. Your sheep hear your voice. You're not lying mm -hmm. when you say we hear your voice. We hear your voice. We make an excuse or I wish I could hear God, you know, and that's a lie. You know, I'm going to say your word is true. I'm, I must be the one that's missing it. So anyway, uh, so it was like, I hear your voice. Father, what's going on? Nothing. Peace. No, don't, don't even concern yourself with it. So. I said, okay, then Wednesday rolled around, and I'm like, I'd like to have a scripture, Father, or something, you know, I mean, I'm going to tell my family to chill out, I need to have something, so I really, you know, and I just want that, please, mm -hmm. Lord, and so he led me to uh, Isaiah 37, verse 9, I don't, I've, I've missed it on this before, I, I hear, you know, Jeremiah 16, uh, something. <laughs> Destruction is coming, or something. you know. But anyway, but I had a lot of peace, and I, I think he leads us by his peace. True. And you know, we, we get all caught up in the voices around us, and that it's so important for us to shut down sometimes and completely say, there is, there's only one voice that I will follow. Amen. And every other voice is going to play way down the line. And, could, and so anyway, I don't want to go too hey, Let deep. me hold the mic so you can flip pages. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Verse 9. Okay. This is talking about when, uh, when Hezekiah was being threatened by the Assyrian army. And, you know, I really don't, I read Isaiah a lot, but not this, I hadn't been in this area very often. So I don't even, didn't really remember it. But he said, uh, thus says the Lord, do not be afraid because of the words you have heard, which the young men of the king of Assyria have reviled me. Behold, I will put a spirit in him so that he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land. Um, skip ahead to 33. Uh, basically, he said, I'm having a hard time. Hallelujah. I'd hand you my glasses, but I don't have them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I got the big print right here. Um, anyway. Essentially, uh, it's not going to come 
the storm's not going to come. That was the word that said, it will not enter your city. You will not, it will not, there will not be an arrow fired or a shield raised. And uh, so I kind of like calmed my family down basically with that and praise God. And, I, and uh, it was a matter of just uh, exalting God and just putting everybody to, at ease. And there was some fear from uh, like my mother was afraid. And uh, but, you know, we've we always bug out for the storm. Usually we go to Birmingham or something and uh, play around for, as an excuse, <laughs> extended vacation. But God, uh, I, I've got a lot of heathens on my string right now. A lot of people in my past that watch me and I make I didn't want to make a post like that. But I said, I'm going to go ahead and make this post days in advance and they need these miracles they need mm. to see god speaking to his people they need to see us mm. moving in the supernatural so that there can be some reality that kind of breaks in on their Amen. little world because they're talking a <clears throat> lot of anti yeah. rigmarole and it's and it doesn't shake me but i can see how they don't really care to hear anything they're 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 caught up demonically in this closed up thing so they need these interventions. They need, to, they need to hear these testimonies. And Father, thank you so much for revealing this to me yes, and making it, me able to show it to a lot of these people who do not believe in you. Thank you, Father. And giving us this opportunity, Lord, to, mm. to be exhibiting the elements of your fantastic, miraculous kingdom. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you. Come on, Louise. Awesome. Beautiful. Come on. <laughs> uh, when we first came down here years Can ago. Can I hold that nice and close? <laughs> uh, when we first came down here years ago, I remember I went to the beach with Christy and a bunch of girls, and we interceded against one of the storms. So when this one came, and I heard through Sashi that they just came from the beach interceding. Like I knew and felt, you know, this is very good. <laughs> and I remember I was out there one time. Uh, Frank was ill, and I went outside in, in the backyard, and I just started, you know, praying against that storm and binding it. Mm. And it never came, and neither did this one. Amen. So I thank you, God. Amen. Thank you. But, what, but what I came up here for was to thank all the girls that went to this to pray for us. Amen. Thank you. Awesome. Thank yes. you, Louise. Beautiful. <laughs> Amen. I want to thank God for the family of God statewide in Florida coming together. Uh, through corporate prayer on the phone. Every night, there would be, um, uh, what do you call, uh, conference calls with different leaders in every county and every city along the, the coastline. And it was just an honor to be able to join in with them. And there was such a, uh, it was such a faith builder. Because, you know, sometimes when you're praying in your own little, town or city you feel like maybe you're the only one and it's like all on you and 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 just to know that the body the the, the body of Christ rising up and taking their authority and speaking to that wind you know and commanding it to go back off the coastline commanding the the waters to remain where God ordained for them to to remain and so, and, and then just, just to, I don't know, I, I just thank God for that opportunity. And, and I believe that it, it is, um, uh, as we do that more and more, it's, it's bringing the whole body, mm. not just our little body <clears throat> here, but we're so interconnected all through this state. I'm just talking about the state of Florida because, you know, and, and of course, Georgia and Carolinas, but wherever God puts you, that's where he's given you authority to walk in and to command 
um, wherever he sends you. So anyway, mm -hmm. I, I just, uh, I was very honored and I was just thrilled and very encouraged in the spirit to know that we, you know, we're all, it was like a, a shield all the way up the coastline uh, of believers speaking the same thing. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Come. Yeah. I just, um, I'll keep it short, but I do believe this is a very special thing for us to do. So I just, I just want to turn it into a prayer. Amen. So Father, I just want to praise you and thank you for the peace that passes all understanding. Lord, you just, I know that I experienced in my mind all the things that was going through of what we need to do and how to be wise. But deep inside, you have given us a peace that goes with us through your Holy Spirit that we can, in the storm, have the peace yes. and out of the storm have the peace. Thank you for the gifts that you give us that cannot be revoked. Thank you that wherever we go, that peace goes with us, Lord. So I just want to thank you for that peace that doesn't make any sense in our mind, but deep down in our spirit, we can just have that peace. Thank you. Amen. Awesome. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I in, in the past, um, other hurricanes, I've been, you know, really nervous. And this one, even though at a, at a time it looked really, really bad, um, there was just, there was nothing. Even though we went through all the steps of being prepared. Um, but uh, I, I, I like what Pastor Rowe was saying on how storms bring, what storms can uncover. And um, Isaiah had a dream. This was before the storm. Isaiah, your son. My son. Sorry. Yes, my, my son, my six-year-old. Um, <laughs> he had a dream. He woke up. Um, I, don't, I don't remember what day it was, but it was before we knew it was going to hit us. And he said, um, I dream we went to the beach, and we, and we um, uncovered bars of gold. And I was like, you know what? When this storm passes, we're going to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> and we did. And he was disappointed because he, he didn't find any bars of gold. But, um, you know, during this whole time, I mean, the kids and I, we went to the beach and we went to the park and we flew kites. And, you know, I, I, it, we, I think we're the only ones in our neighborhood that appeared to be the crazy ones. But um, what rose up in, in my spirit was how, how we are, what we're doing in the midst of the storm. And we're still allowing the joy of the Lord to to be expressed and um, we're not walking around in fear we're not hiding out um, which I know there's you know in the natural I mean we've got to be wise sure. and all that <clears throat> but um, but being wise does it be, mean being fearful and um, so we we enjoyed our time and we um, you know we got the hurricane snacks and the, the whole hurricane party thing um, and, you know, but fear was not, fear was not there. It was not um, an issue for us. And, um, and we know that when storms come, when the trials and the tribulations of life, it can bring out the worst and the best. Mm. And um, I know Jess got a dream, which I'm not going to share because one I don't remember and it's hers. But, um, and that was somehow related to the storm. But, you know, I think about Isaiah's dream and how under the sand wasn't something bad it was something good mm. and so if we allow that mm. if we allow those things that that god permits in our life it can produce the gold right. you know so i just thank you lord i thank you for joy and fear being defeated in jesus Amen. name awesome beautiful okay <clears throat> um i wanted to just give thanks and praise for our spiritual family that we have here and our natural family because um, it's we joke in our natural family that we don't see each other unless somebody's moving or there's a hurricane and uh, or it's somebody's birthday maybe but um, Joy Hastings called me the maybe Tuesday-ish hey uh, are y'all staying or going I'm just checking on some people it meant the world to me 
like it, it just it so uh, uncovers the, what a, a family we have in this small group and extended beyond, mm. and it, it's just it's incredible. I mean, one a, couple, a hurricane or two ago, us and the parishes we were raking their yard. They're over at our house raking our yard. I mean, there's there's just such a family here, and that is a huge valuable thing. Mm. I did live in a in a community in Alaska without running water, without electricity, and for a few years. I prefer AC and flush toilets and hot running water, let me tell you. We sucked in and we bought a generator that we're going to return because we never took it out of the box because I prefer to be comfortable. But... God, it was so faithful. And one morning, you know, like, I don't know, Monday-ish or Sunday, I don't remember, but I, I couldn't sleep. And so it's literally like 1.30 a.m. and I can't sleep. And so all I'm doing, I'm watching the news, the weather and stuff. And I was like, what again? Let me look again. What is this cat one, two, three, four, five? Let me see what. And so I went to the NOAA website and, and saw um, National Hurricane Center and I read cat five catastrophic and I went I looked around my house and I thought I've got some nice furniture <laughs> I've got some nice stuff that was in I inherited it wasn't at Ikea you know I mean this is some heirloom stuff and you can't replace it and I was like gosh I don't want to have to like literally just have the clothes on my back but if I have to I have to and it was weird because during the storm the preparation I kept feeling like meh like, I did, I kept, am I just crazy? Should I be, like, this could literally, we may not have a house, for real, <laughs> like, for real. I mean, this could be that bad. Or is God, you know, you know how you do. And so, anyway, I just kept feeling peace. And anyway, so I'm just, I just want to thank you, Lord, for family. Oh, I got to say one more thing. Because Pastor Robin, he was preaching. And I feel like people have said this right now politically. We're, we have been given uh, a, a peace, a time of peace. Why? I don't know. I mean, other than prayers, yes. But why did, I mean, there's something coming and brewing one day. I feel it for my whole life. I have felt like in my lifetime, I may see some pretty rough things in my lifetime, like, you know, in the natural. And we have been given a period of time to prepare our hearts, our minds, our relationships, and and it, it means it'll mean more than anything um, during and and so I felt like that's what the Lord was showing me that during this that it's our relationships it's mm -hmm. our it's the body of Christ mm -hmm. so so Lord we thank you that we're part of a body we thank you that we're part of a family and that you are our Father Lord we just praise you for that Lord and we do ask you to continue preparing our hearts Lord uh, for whatever the future brings in Jesus name Amen. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I felt like a ping pong ball. <laughs> <laughs> it was category five. It was category. They kept changing everything. And I really don't pay attention to those things most of the time because it can freak you out. But then I got a call that did freak me out. It's like, you know, you got to get out of here. I'm thinking, I wasn't planning on going anywhere. So anyway, the bottom line is I... I, I decided I was going to get out before it got really bad because last time I waited till the last second when we really did have some problems and I couldn't even leave Florida. I had to go to uh, Atlanta, Georgia. So I said, I'm just going to go ahead of time. So I did that. And I asked my uh, nephew to help me out because he's very good at getting good deals and stuff like that. So we did that. And I just really felt like God really gave me peace that I should go. And I did. And it was just amazing. I mean, it seems like lately... <laughs> the last several years, I never get out on time with the airlines. They're always like hours behind, something always going on. That was exactly on schedule coming, exactly on schedule coming back. Uh, my neighbors seeing me go said, you know, what's going on? Are you evacuating? You know, people showing care and people calling me to find out what I was doing or texting me what I was doing. And it was just really special just having that, knowing there were people there and God showing me, I'm watching over you. Amen. And, you know... Maybe I didn't need to go, but, you know, I did need to go. I, I, I just felt physically, emotionally exhausted, and it was, I felt like I got renewed being up there, and it was really special, so I was very thankful. Amen. Thanks be to God. Yes. Amen. Awesome. Okay. Somebody else? 
Okay, well, you, you both of you snoozed for a second, and, and somebody jumped in, so yeah, boom, and then boom. <laughs> well, I was thankful for a governor who, back in March, April, was in Israel. He prayed that we'd have a safe hurricane season, and uh, and he put the little paper in the wall. And I was thankful for a president who honors Israel, and I believe God honored him, and I believe God honored this state because of of our Amen. leaders. Amen. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Okay. Come. Either way, it doesn't matter. Okay. You can get up front here. Get in the queue. I've yeah. just been listening. And one of the um, things that Pastor Robin spoke about, uh, the storms. And for those of you who know us, we feel like we've been in a spiritual hurricane for several years. And it just... When this storm was coming in the natural, we don't really get too shaken up. You worry about your my mother because my father recently passed away. So you, you think about those people that aren't able to maybe take care of their self. And um, my sister-in-law is very a huge scaredy cat. And that's where we ended up going was to um, Uvalda, a little bit like Nashville, Georgia. <laughs> Nobody knows where it is. And um, so there... We, we went up there, and, um, you know, we, I just have two things. One, God's faithful. Mm. Um, you know, whether your life looks like you thought it was going to look or not, God is faithful. Amen. And we have watched the body of Christ reach out to us. Um, after years of walking away, hmm. and I mean do some miraculous things. Uh, my husband lost his son. We had no financial way, no way to get to New Jersey. Uh, and we just had someone, a friend of ours that Raymond's known for years and years and years, but he walks with God now. And just show up and say, no, 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 you're going. Oh, no, 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 you're, he's not just going. You're going with him. And it just, we watched the hand of God be so faithful. And during this storm, you were talking about the peace. And my sister-in-law, like I said, is very scary. And I got woke up one morning about 630. And I just wanted to worship the Lord. So I went and sat on the porch. It was really nice up there. At the end, we didn't get any yucky weather. And I just worshiped. And something happened. I just, I don't even know. It just was the joy of the Lord. It just fell in the midst of worshiping. And it just, you know, it was me and my silly dog. And I went in and my sister-in-law was awake. And, of course, we watched the Weather Channel, like, nonstop. And she was just terrified of what she was going to come home to, basically. And, um, man, I just began to tell her, I felt like, which I used to, do preschool. So I felt like this teacher and I just had all these Bible stories that God was giving me about Jesus sleeping in the boat in the midst of the storm. And I've heard so many people say that. So I just wanted to, that apparently was God's <laughs> underlying, just peace. Because I thought, well, if you're not afraid, I'm not afraid. And if I'm not afraid, whatever's in me, you've given to her because she knows the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I'm just telling you, God used the storm to bring peace to her, to bring joy to me, hmm. which has been a long time coming. Hmm. Thank so you, I thank you for your faithfulness, Father. Even in the midst of all the storms of our life, God, you are never far away. You are right there. And I thank you for that. Amen. Awesome. Beautiful. Come. Amen. So I just want to say that I'm thankful that I know the one whose name is known by the wind and the waves. His name is Jesus. He has yet to have failed me. He has not failed me once. He did not fail me this time. And I just want to say that I, I'm a caretaker and I have a client and um, she has a fear of storms. A bad fear of storms. Horrible fear of storms. And she, but she didn't want to leave her house. You know, she didn't want to leave her house, and she didn't want to leave her house. And I finally had to make the decision because I'm the only one down here. She only has one nephew, 
who lives in Milwaukee that she's related to. And I had to call him and say, look, we got to get her out of here. I mean, she has a fear of storms. She's got to go. She cannot be here. I don't care if the wind blows through the trees, this woman starts hysterically crying. This is not a good thing. So anyway, I want you to know that the Lord on Saturday night, no, it was Friday night. It was Friday night. I called between him and me. We found flights for her on Saturday. We found a flight for me. I got on the same flight with her. I took her to Atlanta. I stayed an hour. I put her on the next flight to Milwaukee. Then at two hours later, I got on another flight and I came back here. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen the Lord orchestrate in my entire life. There was nobody in security when we had to pass through that thing. Everybody was gone. Then we were looking around like going, where is everybody? And they're like, oh, they came through really early this morning. You were like the last people we're going to see today. I mean, it was gorgeous. It was beautiful. Anyway, so she's gone, right? So that's good. She's happy. She's in Milwaukee doing her thing. So then I got to help another client of mine who um, their caregiver decided not to show up. So I got to work that day. So I worked on Monday. And then I came home on Tuesday. On Mon- I came on, a mo- on Monday and I looked at my mom and I said, are we going? Are we leaving? Are we back? She goes, why would I be leaving? I'm like, oh, my God, I love you. Okay, I love like minded Christians. Okay, we're not leaving, we're staying. So we stayed. And let me tell you, um, Lily and Amanda went to Jacksonville. So my mom and I had 48 hours alone to enjoy one another. We had a wonderful time. Um, I'll be honest with you, my hurricane preparation after my busy, busy week consisted of donuts. Klondike bars, red wine, because I needed to anoint the four corners of the house, <laughs> and two cases, no, three cases of water, one for my mom, one for me, and one for the dog. So, <laughs> that was it. So, but the Lord was faithful. He's generous, and he's kind, and he's loving, and he always shows up, and I don't care whether you left or whether you stayed. Believe me, you heard his voice, and you were in his perfect will. Okay, because your circumstances were independent and perfectly orchestrated by him. Amen. So I want to thank you. I, I, I praise him. I know the one whose name is known by the wind and the waves. And when we speak his word and say, peace, be still, they have to do what they hear him say. And so I give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory, Lord, for your hand as it moved that storm off the coast from us and sent it up, up the coast. Anyway, just bless the people that have, are having to deal with, you know, situations now. And, and I just give you all the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. I just want to confess that um, I was all set to stay. I was prepared. And then we left. And that wind blew on my soul and uncovered some very yucky stuff. I got furious. I was very angry because I didn't want to leave. And uh, I never would have realized that that was in me. Um, and God used it. He humbled me. And, uh, you know, it's like we went to a beautiful place. We were in Lake Oconee, Georgia. And Jimmy knows that. He's going, mm-hmm. <laughs> We ended up going sightseeing. We went to the little town of Madison. We went antiquing with Carol and Karen. And, uh, you know, we went out to eat every night. And we just really loved it up, and it's like God just took me to this beautiful place. My house wasn't all boarded up. You know? So uh, I just want to thank God that, uh, you no, know, he knows the plants he has for us, and usually they're so much better than the ones we've planned for ourselves. So thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. I just want to close with a prayer here this morning. <clears throat> Father, we just want to 
in its kind of raw state. This is us, Lord, here today. Above it all, just wanting to say thanks to you. Lord, you've heard in the midst of the congregation, right here, collectively, publicly, unashamedly, our testimonies and our gratitude for your interventions. God, I pray that what's happened here this morning would not just be an event, but it would become more and more a way of life for us, Lord, that we would be full of thanksgiving, always seeing the good things you're doing, even in the midst of difficult situations. I thank you for your blessing upon us and that you would make us contagious, peculiar. You said we are a peculiar people, a chosen generation who stand as lights in a dark world. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that as we become more and more at peace and have joy and have confidence and and hear your word and demonstrate what you're saying, that the world would look on us and long to know you. That's our prayer today. We love you and we bless you.